Hi everyone, it's Gone Researching, Tips, Tricks, and How-To. This is the sixth instructional video in a series I'm creating on Family Tree Maker 2017. My hope is this will serve as a visual supplement to the companion guide and the help built into the program. I think everyone should be able to learn something useful, regardless of whether you are new to Family Tree Maker 2017, upgrading from an older version, or have been using the program for a while now. The Places workspace is probably one of the lesser used workspaces. How much you use it depends on you and the state of your genealogy and or the state of your family tree file. In the fifth instructional video, Places Workspace Part 1, Place Names, we looked at place names in Family Tree Maker. In this video, we are going to look at the Places Workspace itself to familiarize you with its features. The next video, Places Workspace Part 3, will cover the place menu and adjusting and resolving place names. This is Places Workspace Part 2, the Places Workspace. I'd like to first point out that I'm using Family Tree Maker 2017, the build released by Software Mac Kiev in 2017 on an older computer that came with Windows 7 but is now running Windows 10. There are now two updates to Family Tree Maker 2017 that were released in February 2018 and September 2018, but I'm not using either yet because I'm keeping my program the same version as a cousin's while we work on something. For those already running either update, don't worry, everything here still applies to those releases, though a few features have been tweaked. I'll try to point out any changes or tweaks with regards to the updates. Family Tree Maker 2019 is just around the corner. The majority of the content of these videos will apply to Family Tree Maker 2019. I will create a separate video overviewing the differences between 2017 and 2019 once 2019 is released. As a reminder, in order to use the Records Merge feature, you must have Family Tree Maker 2017 version and be signed into your Family Search account, which is free and or be signed into your Ancestry data subscription to access the record collections on Ancestry, which requires a subscription fee. I say this at the beginning of every video because for the most part, each video can stand alone and you do not have to watch them in order. So far in this series, we've covered the Family Tree Maker 2017 interface, the Plan Workspace and the People Workspace, which was divided into two parts. In Family Tree Maker, all the different options and features are organized so that similar things are together, which means there are seven workspaces. These workspaces are Plan, People, Places, Media, Sources, Publish, and Web Search. The Places workspace, which you see here, is where you look at your trees, places, and locations and how the people in your tree relate to those places. This is one of the workspaces that requires an internet connection in order for the interactive map to work. I think of the Places workspace as looking at your tree from the places or locations point of view. In the Places workspace, there is just one tab, Places, on the Places toolbar. Looking at the rest of the items on the Places toolbar, the left right arrows, navigation buttons, located left of the workspace tab, jumps you back and forth between the last two workspaces or tabs you visited. Next we have the tab view of the workspace, in this case the Places view tab. At the right end of the Places toolbar, over here, are quick leak buttons to delete a selected item, use this with care and caution, a print button to print the current view of the map, print a place usage report, or print a place usage report for the currently selected place location, and a share button to send or export a place usage report or a place usage report for the currently selected place location using the default settings. In order for the share to work automatically, your email program must be on your computer because web-based email programs do not work with Family Tree Maker. If you want to change the default settings, use the Publish workspace. So below the Places toolbar, there are three panels that are very interactive with each other. At the left here is the list panel, sometimes called the index panel in this workspace. At the top of this panel is a tally of how many different places, locations, are in this particular Family Tree Maker file. To the right of this location tally are four buttons that affect how the information in the list below is displayed. This list is a master or complete list of all the locations used in this particular Family Tree file not a list of every location in the Place Name Authority Place Name Database. By default, the list displays places, locations in a hierarchy groups alphabetically by country, the largest division, with unrecognized or ignored places sorted alphabetically by the smallest division. 
instead of nested under the appropriate country. The first button is a toggle button for displaying the list as a flat list with the hierarchy off, meaning a simple alphabetical listing of locations based on the smallest location division unit used and the hierarchy groups list. The second button expands the hierarchy listing to show all nodes or sublocation places. See down here? Now oh, they're all open. The third button closes this expanded hierarchy list. You can manually click them to open the ones that you want. The fourth button is the Resolve All Place Names tool. It looks for all unrecognized places that need to be resolved so they can be shown on the map in the data panel. This process will ask you to make a backup of your tree file before beginning the process of reviewing your entered places locations. It is strongly suggested that you let it do a backup before continuing. The tool can also be reached under the Tools menu. Below this is a choice of displaying the list by place or person. Below the display list by is a find or search feature. Here you can put in a location or a person's name and use the left and right arrows next to the entry field to jump to the next search result. The find feature seems to work a little easier if you have the places listed using the flat list option. When you select an entry from the list, several things happen. We will look at the list by place first. When you select a place from the list, the map in the center panel also called the location panel in this workspace, changes to show that place centered on the map if that selected place is a recognized location or if Bing Maps recognizes it despite Family Tree Maker not recognized. If you click on a level in the place hierarchy, the map will display that location like a county. More on the map in a moment. At the same time, over on the right, in the editing information panel over here, that panel displays details about that location. At the top of the information panel is a selected place in bold type. Below that is the place name field in which you can modify the place here if needed. But remember that it will affect every instance of that location name. There is the option to enter a short version of the place for reports if you desire to do so. Below that is the location given in global satellite positioning, GPS coordinates, for locations not automatically located on the map, let's say Belgrade was not automatically located, you can manually enter the GPS coordinates using the location calculator. There are three different format types to use, or you can manually set the location on the map using the push pin, like that. Beneath this is the associated people list, meaning the people in your tree with this location used in an event or facts place field. There is a tally of people associated with the selected place just after the section title and a go to button that will take you to the selected person in the people workspace. Or double click the name to be taken there. Below so this from left to right is a button to expand all the details for each person or using the pull down arrow just to the right to change the settings to expand all on loading the list of associated people. The next button collapses all the items to just show the names of the associated people. The next two buttons work with recognized places. The link to this button shows just people associated with this specific place, like a city or town. The link to all button shows all the people associate it with all localities within this place, such as a county. The map in the center data location panel acts the same way when dealing with places or people. Remember, you need to be connected to the internet in order for it to work. The default is the roadmap view. It looks like a roadmap. In the upper corner area of the map image are some buttons. The plus button enlarges or zooms the view of the map. The negative or minus button reduces or zooms out the view of the map. Or you can scroll your mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. Left click and hold down your mouse button and then drag the map to the area of the map you want to view. The locate me button, a black dot in a circle or sort of looks like a cartoon eyeball, changes the map to show where you are located. I'm not going to select it, but you can give it a try. Above these buttons is a pull down arrow to change the type of map displayed. Besides road, aerial gives you a satellite view of the location. Bird's eye 
gives you a 3D view or angled aerial view. And it may take a little time to load. There you go. This is what it looks like. And street side gives you a view of a location as if you're standing or driving on that street. Just place the blue person figure on the street you want to see. The street side view, you can click on the arrow in the circle located at the center bottom of the map to open and close a smaller view of the road map at the same time on which a red diamond indicates where you are and a red cone indicates which direction you are looking. The blue highlight on the roads indicate which roads were photographed and viewable in street side. It is important to note that not all areas of the earth have been photographed in bird's eye or street side view, so these options may not be available. The person figure turns red, there is no street side view available for that area. At the top of the map, you again see the currently selected place or a place you have typed in search using the go button. An additional interactive feature allows you to have the map show nearby cemeteries, libraries, courts, churches, or hospitals, which may help you when looking for resources or planning a research trip. Select the type of location you want to see and click glow. You'll get multiple pins. Hovering over a blue pin will tell you about that location. At present, cemeteries and churches do not appear to be working, but again, the feature likely varies by location. Want a bit wider view of the map? Up at the top of the frame area between the left list index panel and the center data location panel near the word location is a solid black arrowhead to open and close the left panel. While the right editing information panel cannot be completely closed, you can narrow or widen it by clicking on the dotted area, like a grip area, located in the center of the frame between the center panel and the right panel. Just select and drag. Similar dots or grip area is located in the frame between the left and center panel. Now, when you change the list in the left list index panel to person, there are some different features available. In the left panel, when list by person is selected, the tally now shows the total number of people in this particular tree file. Again, the first button is a toggle button between a flat, simple alphabetical listing of people and a hierarchy list whose nodes are the locations associated with that person. People without a toggle area have no locations associated with them. Again, the second button expands all nodes and the third button closes all nodes. The fourth button is still the resolve all place names tool. The find now searches the person list and the left right arrows moves you through the matches to your search. When you select a person in the person list, that person appears in the right editing information panel showing the details for that person's places. At the top of the column is the person's name with his her time span, meaning birth year and death year if these are entered in the tree. The go to button will take you to that person in the per people workspace as well as double clicking on the person's name. Below that is a toolbar where the magnifying glass centers and zooms the map on a selected person's places. The family button includes immediate family in the information editing panels shown de details. The pedigree icon button with the drop down arrow allows ancestral generations from 0 to 4 to be added to the panels shown details. Next is the birth year and death year of the selected person with line colors shown for the earliest and latest dates. These line colors can be changed. Last button icon, two curved arrows with an arrow pull down, is the sort by. This gives you the choice to sort the details in this panel by family then given name, by given name then family, by birth, by marriage, or by death. 
You can toggle the details to show or not show the nodes or places for the selected person using the minus plus negative positive icon in front of the person's name. With the places showing, you can check the box for each fact location you want to appear on the map. Depending on what you select and who you add, this can show you a migration path for the person or a family over generations, or visually every place that person has lived, which may give you ideas of where to look for additional sources. With the print option, you can print these maps you create. What is printed is what you see in the center panel. Depending on the orientation of the paper, some things may get clipped and not printed, so you may need to adjust the left and right panels to show more map or zoom out a little more to get exactly what you want to print on the paper. You cannot print bird's eye aerial view maps. Um, you want a digital, not paper. If you have a PDF printer description file installed on your computer, you can print, meaning save a PDF file, instead of print to paper. A tip I have is if you want an image file of the map you created, try taking a screen capture using Windows Accessories Snipping Tool or the Mac equivalent. You may end up with something that works for you. Unfortunately, there's no way to save your maps in Family Tree Maker for additional viewing and editing later. Now that we have reviewed the Places workspace itself in this sixth video, in the next video, the seventh, we will take a look at the Place menu and adjusting resolving place names. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video. If you have not watched the videos before this one, I hope you will. It really would be beneficial to watch, especially if reading the companion guide or the built-in help does not thrill you. The next video will be on the Places Workspace Part 3, the Place Menu, and Adjusting Resolving Place Names. Thank you for watching. This has been Tips, Tricks, and How-To by Gone Researching.